it's been a few weeks. The last video I know I posted uh, was out sawing some really hard pines in the very, very cold weather for the south. Um, it was rough, but we got the job done. Uh, the customer was incredibly happy with it. Uh, he got more than enough to do what it is that he wants to do. And uh, the boards came out beautifully. Uh, I only had one board that came out with an issue in it because of the blade. Uh, today, what we're going to do is uh, demonstrate how to curl and uncurl a blade uh, when they come off of the sawmill. Um, we're also going to be working on these three logs that are right behind us. The one closest to the camera here is a white oak log. The two behind it are red oak. The two red oaks are going to get quarter sawn. One's going to get quarter sawn at eight quarter. The other's going to get quarter sawn at four quarter. The white oak log that's sitting here, we're actually going to be cutting a mantle out of that that's going to be six inches thick, 12 inches wide. He needs 74 inches. I'm going to add a foot on to that, six inches for either end for splitting, cracking, checking, etc. But I'm going to walk through that process as well, how I determine how it is that I'm going to cut a mantle out of a log. Um, I don't believe it's as simple as just roll a log onto the mill, square it off into a cant, and then cut a section off of it, you've got a mantle. Uh, for something like this, I want to make sure that I'm not boxing the pith. That'll cause the mantle to split apart. I really want to try to get a quarter sawn face on the leading face of the uh, mantle itself. That way, when you're standing there looking at it, you get to see that nice quarter sawn pattern going across it. So that means I either need um, riff sawn hitting that leading edge or quarter sawn hitting that leading edge. We'll just have to see what I can do about it. Usually for something like a 12 inch wide mantle at like six or seven inches thick, I would really want a bigger log than what we've got here to cut it out of. My real objective with those is to try to get at least 12 inches off the center of the pith so that when I cut that mantle, that mantle is essentially quarter sawn all the way across it. Uh, you get the reflex going across the top and the bottom, you don't get the reflex, you get more of a cathedral front to that mantle, but that's going to be the most stable without, or rather with the least amount of twist and cup and bow and splitting that I can get for that customer. In this particular instance, that's just not viable. I want to figure out where my mantle is going to be before I actually complete the cuts. This cut and this cut I took off because the log was bowed at both ends or had large outgrowths at both ends and those really just kind of get in the way of being able to see where the log is in relation to what it is that you're trying to lay out. And then I trimmed off the end of the log with the chainsaw so that I could actually get in here and see my growth rings much better. Now what I want to do is I want for this mantle since what most people will see will be that front leading long edge not the top not the bottom but they'll see the two ends and they'll see that front leading edge. 
what I would like to do is try to get quarter sawn material on that front leading edge. What that does mean, however, is that we're looking at a, a flat sawn piece of timber. The risk that we run with that is that it's going to want to cup. It's going to want to twist. So in order to try to account for that, we're going to have to actually cut a bigger mantle than what the customer wants in the end. He's looking for a 6x12. To try to account for twisting and cupping, we're actually going to cut him a 7x13. That should give him plenty of room to try to flatten it out um, and account for shrinkage of the material as it dries uh, and give him the best quality of mantle that we could try to give him. Preferably, I would like to have a log that was big enough so that I could get the full mantle quarter sawn. Quarter sawn has the least amount of shrinkage side to side, but does have more shrinkage in thickness. But that would be the most stable that I could possibly get him. Unfortunately, with this log, if I take a look here, not in metric. If I take a look here and I go from this top cut, that 13 is going to be down here, which would include the pith of the tree. And we absolutely do not want to box the pith. Boxing the pith means that you cut and you include that pith inside of the material. We don't want to do that because it's going to split straight down the middle. There's nothing that you're really going to be able to do about it. Um, aside from drilling into the back of it and trying to secure it with really big lag bolts or something like that. And even then, it's still going to pull apart and it's more than likely just going to strip the uh, hole where those lag bolts are. So what we really want to try to do here is look and see where we can get quarter sawn or rift sawn on that leading edge that most people are actually going to see. And so what I did was I trimmed this end off so that I could see the grain pattern a bit better. And I'm going to outline some of these growth rings so that we can actually see what it is that we're going to be cutting. I'm not going to do every single one of them, but enough to actually give me an idea of what we're doing here. So it grew up during a time that was very, very conducive to this thing actually growing. And so what we're looking at now are outlines of our growth rings on this log. And I want to try, like I said, to orient my board so that I get the most out of these quarter sawn patterns or even rift sawn patterns that I can on that front leading edge. So if I'm looking at these rings right here as that leading edge, maybe if I actually turn my square around here, I know I need to be able to get about 13 inches. And that looks like about there. I have to sight down the log as I'm doing this because I need to know that I can actually get that cut without messing up because of wane or anything of that nature. So I know that I need to come down at least this far. And that right there looks like probably what my mantle is going to be. right there and I'm going to square that off on this side as well lay this out I'm going to bring it up to the seven to give me about seven inches and then I'm gonna mark that and run it down and then I'm gonna come around on this side here 
and I'm going to put it on 13. Uh oh. Put it on 13, try to hold it in place, and see what that gives me. So it looks like. It looks like on this leading edge, we're going to get mostly rifts on, um, which is still going to give us that pattern, which is exactly what we want. We want that uh, rifts on type pattern or quarter saw pattern. But it looks like that's what I may end up actually cutting from this log here. Uh, I hate, again, that it's going to be a flat sawn piece just because of the risk of it twisting and cupping and warping. Hopefully because it's so big, um, we're gonna strap it down, put some weight on it, and try to keep as much of that twist and cup out of it as humanly possible. Um, but it doesn't look like we're gonna get much better than that. There is a crack that starts right here. Um, I would really prefer to not have a crack in it but there's also a crack that runs right here. The only thing I would really be able to do is either sh is shift it to this side, but if I shift it here, then we're gonna have this crack running through it. So it really looks like no matter what we do, we're gonna end up with a crack. Hopefully this doesn't run very far into the log. We have a 10 foot log here and we're looking for eight feet. So if that crack doesn't run all the way through the log, we're good. If it runs a foot in this direction and a foot from that end, we're good. If it runs three feet, well, then we're not so good. But it looks like, yeah. So it looks like that's what we're gonna end up cutting out of this log.
If you like these videos and you want to stay up to date with us, make sure to click that subscribe button down below. You can also visit us at vikingblooded.com and facebook.com forward slash vikingblooded and patreon.com forward slash vikingblooded. As always, stay safe and have fun.